If you keep your money in the bank, listen up. Your savings could be at risk. The banking system is once again under extreme stress. And after last year's banking crisis, the dangers are clearer than ever. Car loans are defaulting. Credit card debt is ballooning. Commercial real estate is on the brink of collapse. These aren't just red flags. These are the sounds of a financial ticking time bomb. But there is a safe and easy way to protect your financial future. Gold. Gold is outside the government's reach and safe from economic policies that jeopardize your wealth. Gold allows you to lock in today's value in the face of tomorrow's uncertainty. Don't wait for the next headline crash or bank run to act. An action could be catastrophic. Contact Noble Gold Investments today and safeguard your tomorrow. As a bonus, they'll give you a free quarter ounce gold standard coin as a thank you for opening a qualified account. Visit noblegoldinvestments.com to claim your gold coin. That is noblegoldinvestments.com. And remember, there's always a risk of investment. There are no guarantees of any kind. What's going on, everyone? I be Jericho Green. Thank you for being here. Make sure that you hit the link in the description box to my new channel, Green's House. I just uploaded a brand new interview a few days ago. A wonderful young lady by the name of Christine Daniel. She is a behaviorist specializing in children with autism. We talked about a wide array of different things. So please make sure you check that out. I know I learned something, but it was a very interesting conversation. Um, and I'm glad that I had it. And I'm glad there are people like her in the world. So make sure you check that out. Link will be in the description box. So guys, in a world of stupid shit, I'm sure there's a, there isn't a day that goes by that you turn on your phone or your computer, or if you're old school, you open a newspaper and you see something, you're just like, roll, roll raggy? Do people really do this? Are people really that weak? Yes, they are. Oh man, and today's <laughs> no different. This might be, and again, the year's not over. This, uh, woke victimhood uh, slop that we find ourselves drenched in is not over. But this right here could be the stupidest shit I've ever heard. What a waste of money and time. There were cameramen involved. There was editing involved, lighting, makeup. They spent all this money and time on just the dumbest shit. So what is it? Ay, ay, ay. Well, first, I'm going to show you the web page. Then we'll get to the video. <laughs> it is so dumb. Um, and the words that are used are old words like equity, equality, diversity, inclusion. I want to take a shower after hearing that. But these words have been around forever but they've been hijacked and they've been perverted and now they're used, they're weaponized against us and they just make me sick. They make me want shit. So whew, get ready for a heavy dose of these words. But this, and this company, I didn't expect this. The company involved is Advil. Yes, Advil, the pain reliever, the, the, the competition to aspirin and Bayer and Excedrin. Remember, I have a headache this big, and it's screaming for Excedrin. Over-the-counter pain reliever, Advil. How is Advil going to be woke? Isn't pain relief for everybody? Doesn't Advil work for a white headache or a black headache, a headache of color? Doesn't Advil work for everybody? <laughs> Advil, the pain reliever, the low-grade pain reliever, has found a way to dip its toes in the world of woke. How did they do it? Damn it, I'm going to show you. You think I'm going to deal with this myself? You think I'm going to see this woke nonsense victimhood bullshit on my own? Uh-uh-uh. You're sharing in my pain. So here we go. The Advil Pain Equity Project. Pain equity. Everything gets equity. Pain equity. What? The Advil Pain Equity Project introduces Believe My Pain. White people, we don't believe your pain. If you say, ah, doc, my leg, the bone sticking out, compound fracture, they don't believe you. Or they do believe you. I'm sorry. They do. 
but black folks, <laughs> I guess doctors don't believe us. Despite the fact, fortunately, the few times that I've had to go to the doctor for pain, um, hasn't been very often. Um, I've never broken a bone, knock on wood. Uh, but I've had, you know, issues. I've hurt my foot before. Uh, stomach pain when I was a kid. Here's here's a quick one for you. I'm trying to tell you a story. R.I.P. Shout out to my uncle Charlie. For some reason, and he was from Tulsa, Oklahoma. So is this like an Oklahoma dish or something? But one night, my uncle Charlie used to live with us. Him and my dad, best friends. He was like my blood uncle, but him and my dad had been like, you know, down since day one. So one night when I was eight years old, he thought it was a good idea to make a red bean, rice, and banana casserole. Yeah, I know. You lost me at banana. Red beans and rice, I'm there. Who the fuck doesn't like red beans and rice? If you don't like red beans and rice, you've never tried it. Delicious. Delicious. But he thought it was a good idea to slap some bananas on top of that bitch. And my dad, growing up as poor as he did, real poor. Like, poor, poor. Um, growing up as poor as he did, wasting food was not an option for my dad. I'm talking, uh, so we had hogs and stuff growing up. So we would go, he had, my dad had fucking connections everywhere. And he had a connection at the Berkeley Farms in a neighboring town called Castroville probably if you've eaten an artichoke it's come from castroville artichoke capital of the world so we had to connect there and we would go there and pick up stuff that was almost out of code maybe two three days out of code everything that berkeley farms made orange juice milk cottage cheese sour cream uh, during the holidays eggnog whatever so we pick up stacks and stacks of milk crates we take it back home dump it in a barrel mix it with some bread because of course he had to connect over and wonder bread and salinas and we mix it together, and that's how you make slop for the pigs. So he had to connect at Berkeley Farm. So we would go there, and the ones that were that were farthest from being out of code, we would take some of them orange juice or whatever and put it in the house, throw it in the fridge, and you know we drink it. Sometimes we didn't get to them for a while, and the container would be like bloated. It would be completely round because of the carbonation inside of there. When you pop the top on the orange juice, it sounded like a soda. Right. This is how against wasting food. My dad was you better drink that carbonated orange juice. He cut the mold off of cheese the whole night. I can't be the only one. But so throwing away food was not an option. So my uncle made the, the red bean rice and banana casserole. It even sounds gross to say. And I ate some. I got sick. So I ended up going to the hospital. So I haven't been to the hospital. I could probably count. On one hand the amount of times I've been to the doctor for pain. You know, I've been there for illnesses, bronchitis and stuff like that. But pain, uh, it's been a few times. And guess what? Every time I went to the doctor for a pain-related situation or pain-related issue, the doctor listened to me. They get up a little chart, you know, the smiley face that goes from, yeah, you know, which one of these, point out the face that you are. What reflects your pain the best? And every time I would point it out to them and they would say, OK, and then they would proceed accordingly. Never did they say, oh, stop playing. Nah, you're fine. Walk it off. You're OK. You're tough. Never. It was never anything like that because they treated me like a fucking patient. Weird, I know. But you can see that this is sponsored by Morehouse School, School of Medicine, HB, <laughs> Advil, of course, and Black Health. Ooh, we took out all the, all the uh, vowels. Ooh, Black Health. So this is the homepage to the Advil Pain Equity Project, okay? Stupidest shit ever, I know. But it gets more stupid. It gets stupider. All right? You thought that was it? You thought that that was the end of the ride. You thought we are about to get off of the stupid roller coaster, didn't you? No, strap in. We're barely tick, tick, tick. We're going up. We're still going up. We haven't even hit the turns and shit yet. Okay? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> this is so stupid. This is so stupid. What does this even mean? Here we go. So here is the video. This is Believe My Pain. Okay? 
the Believe My Pain Roundtable. Discover the reality of systemic pain bias in this deep group discussion. Systemic, that's another word that they've taken and twisted into some nonsense. Systemic pain bias. What does that mean? I guess we're about to find out. So watch the round table. Of course we are. <laughs> okay. Five patients, one doctor. Now let me do it in the um, the movie voice. Remember the movie voice guy? He died a few years back. R.I.P. This summer, five patients, one doctor, one moderator, one goal. Address pain and equity at the source. Pain equity. So we all need to hurt the same. In this roundtable discussion, we'll share painful truths that validate systemic pain bias and empower. There's another word, empower. Bleh. Empower the world to advocate for change. That's a and that, that's a real bad one that they pervert. Empower. Women's empower. We're empowering you. Yes. Dress like a whore. Bend over. Show your birth canal to the fellas. That's empowering. Ooh. So. <laughs> Believe my pain. God, stop. Part one, the reality of pain and equity. Learn what pain and equity is and how an equitable treatment impacts Black communities. Part two, true stories of pain bias here from five Black patients who have personally experienced pain bias in healthcare. You got five of them, so it must be the same for everybody. Here we go. On, you're getting the full screen. Yes, you are. Oh, boy. When I approach a medical professional, I'm frustrated that we have to validate our pain just to get treated like human beings. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wait, hold on. The healing of the body was easy for me. We have to read those, st it's those statistics. Okay. In an Advil study about pain in experiences, 74, hold on, let me move this stupid thing out of the way. More dumb videos. 74% of black people said there is bias in how pain is diagnosed and treated. Toughen up, Negro. The healing of the body was easy for me. This is the psychological part. It's so this scarred you psychologically? Come on, man. Stop being so damn weak. It's awful. 83% said that they have had a negative experience with a healthcare provider when seeking help dealing with pain. What's a negative experience? Did the doctor hit you where it hurts? Like, ah, oh, you just fucking don't. Come here. All right, get out. I should not have to beg my doctor to run tests or ask them to take another look. Have you ever had to beg your doctor to run a test? Don't they love running tests? Because that means what? What the OJ say? Money, 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 money. Running tests cost you money. Your insurance company has to pay for it. So, of course, they want to run tests. I've never had a doctor say, eh, I don't want to run a test on that. If a test is necessary, they're probably going to run that bitch. <sighs> believe my pain. You better. If you don't believe my pain, you're racist. Advil hosted a roundtable discussion about systemic pain bias in healthcare. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry to keep stopping it, but systemic pain and pain bias in healthcare. Healthcare. Abortion is healthcare. The baby dies. I wonder what the pain is like for the... Nah, forget it. It's just a baby. Stop. Welcome to Believe My Pain, a discussion about systemic <laughs> pain bias in healthcare. I want to thank all of you <laughs> and all of you for joining me today uh -huh. as we talk about this very important issue. I also want to thank the Pain Equity Project developed by Advil in partnership with the Morehouse School of Medicine and Black Health. Is this real? for inviting us to be a part of their commitment to addressing pain bias in Black communities. I do. It's like Charles right, Barkley. Let's get right into it with Terrible. our first topic, the reality of pain inequity. Oof. 
Part one. Pain equity is achieved when everyone is treated equally regardless of their age, race, ethnicity, gender, or socioeconomic status, and receives the That's highest terrible. quality pain care and management. Okay, so Dr. Uchi, you have written this book, Legacy, A Black Physician Reckons with Racism in Medicine. You are a legacy Black female physician. Hold on a second. So when you have these things, like her book is dealing with racism in medicine and racism and all this kind of stuff. Do these people not have the ability to speak up for themselves? Like if you feel like you're really experiencing racism at work and you're a black woman, you are shielded in two layers of victimhood. Do you not have the ability to speak up for yourself? Why would you deal with that? Oh, I experience it all the time. This, that. Then do something about it. Either do something about it or shut the fuck up. Because if you're not going to do anything, then don't complain. But to experience real racism, you, you're okay with that? You're going to stay in that profession? Okay. And you are armed with expertise. Oh. It says she's an expert on racial bias in healthcare. She's an expert. So she's put in more than 10,000 hours of studying racial bias in healthcare. How do you study that? How do you quantify that? Tease that frames this issue around black pain in such a clear way. Black and so I'm pain. so glad that you're here today. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here to talk to you about this issue that means so much to me and it impacts um, so many members of our community, and we'll hear those stories today. All right, so Dr. Uche, could you just outline what are some of the myths about Black, black people pain. in pain? So I think like the main thing is that health professionals think that Black people are biologically different than other people, that our skin is thicker, that we have less sensitive skin and higher pain tolerance, and that is all absolutely false. There is no difference between... That's news to me. I've heard people, um, I've had when I was younger, like maybe junior high, elementary school, kids would ask. Um, and I, actually, I've had somebody ask me that as an adult, which just means they're fucking stupid. I like my son would say, I think they have special effects. But I've had somebody ask me that when, when, I'm a, when I was an adult, but they've asked, do you get sunburned? Come on. No, my skin is impervious to sun. I've had people say dumb shit like that, <laughs> but a doctor, you've studied the human body and you are going to think that black people have a higher pain tolerance and our skin is tougher. We're not leather. Between black patients and patients of other races. Wow. Mm. So what do you think has perpetuated these myths? You know, the, the legacy of slavery in this country. There we go. I think the there it is. There's the word that makes them come. If you're ever having sex or you're jerking off or you're finger banging a leftist and you just can't get them, oh, my hand's getting tired. My tongue's getting tired. My dick's getting tired. Just whisper in their ear, slavery. <laughs> and there they go. There they go. <sighs> Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Slavery. There it is. Personal and systemic racism that still exists in this country and that is embedded into the institution of medicine and healthcare. Mm -hmm. You know, our health professionals most want to do a good job and care for their patients, mm -hmm. but unfortunately we're seeing you know, implicit bias that they are not listening to their patients. They're not responding to their patients' concerns and sometimes even ignoring their patients. Mm -hmm. And the only way- Because they're Black. Your doctor ignores you because you're black. You ever had a doctor's appointment and the doctor never comes in? He's ignoring you. You ever had the doctor in the examination room with you and you're talking to him and he's just fucking. Like, oh, oh. But doctor, excuse me, doctor, doctor, excuse me. What does that mean? Ignoring their patients. So if a doctor, and I'm assuming she's meaning white doctors. So a doctor is going to have a white patient in one room and a black patient in the other, and the doctor is going to treat them completely different based on what? Oh, yeah. Hey, that we can expose and address it is by first telling our stories. 
we want to work better with doctors. And we and I think that a better, healthier medical system actually allows doctors to do their job better. Agreed. Now, the only good thing about this video is that it's three minutes long. <laughs> That's the only good thing about that video. So, guys, next time you have a headache, next time you have, you know, moderate pain or something like that, something that can be handled with an over-the-counter painkiller, and you have those two little Advil tablets in your hand, you know, remember in Wayne's World, like everything else is black and white, but it's two little pills with yellow. Next time you have those pills in your hand, just know before you swallow them that they care about pain equity and black health. Okay, just know that it should make you feel better. It should make you feel warm and fuzzy inside, like taking a shot of liquor. <laughs> so fucking stupid. How weak are you? Black pain, pain equity, because of systemic racism and slavery. Fucking stop. I'm telling you, next year or this year, I should say, later this year, Christmas time, when I sit on Santa's lap at the mall. I'm going to say, Santa, please give me a time when we're done with this. That's what I want for Christmas, Santa. Uh, I don't know if, I, if the black Santa or white Santa, who I don't know which Santa they're going to have there. But when I'm sitting on his lap, I'm saying, can you make this stop? That's what I want, Santa Claus. I want you to make this shit stop. I want to stop hearing the words diversity, equity, inclusion, systemic racism. Can we just go to a time where we're done with this bullshit? My goodness. Oh. <laughs> Hold on a second. Let me check this out. So, uh, not only pain management and stuff like that, know this too. Know that North Face, the company that makes overpriced jackets and, and puffy vests, the North, North Face offers a discount to UK customers who complete the racial inclusion course because white people, they have it easier when they're out in the wilderness when they're hiking and camping and fishing and stuff like that, they have it easier. People of color, like white people look at them like, hey, what are you doing out here, boy? Actually, if it's in the UK, oh, what are you doing out here? It blow, it black guy out here, do what I do. <laughs> they got you covered. Whether it's your, pay, your medicine or your outdoor gear, the equity police, the DEIs have it covered, man. <laughs> And when you come across somebody who believes this, somebody who's actually, and they have the upspeak, and actually people of color, when you hear that, I want you to resist the urge to do this. Don't do it. Yeah!